Hello, three students. Welcome to the first of two videos on harmonic sequences, which is chapter 16 in the Reg Francoli textbook. So there are two videos this time. The first is all about the sequences we talked about it today in class with the examples we had. And the second video will be about writing them in preparation for the homework and <clears throat> the next exam. So if you turn to page 378, you'll learn a little bit about what a sequence is. So we're taking a musical idea. Here's a random one, Do, Re, Mi. And then what you do is you repeat that idea, either higher or lower in pitch, but keeping the same musical idea in play. So here I'll go up a step, and then I could even keep going, or even more, again, so on and so forth. So. That's a sequence. We're sequencing that ascending stepwise pattern. <clears throat> so a good example of an, an actual musical example is on page 379, which is the Mozart. So Mozart's taking this melody, and notice that he repeats that <clears throat> down a third in the next measure, and which is repeated down a third again. And at the same time, it's very common for melodic sequences to be accompanied by harmonic sequences, which is what we have here. We have <clears throat> so an F major chord going to C major chord, and then take that down a third, so we get D minor going to A minor, and then we get B flat major going to F major. Right, and then <clears throat> the sequence is broken in the next two measures. So there's an idea of a harmonic sequence. So there are a bunch of kinds of them <clears throat> that the book mentions and they're listed here. So the most common, the one we're going to spend the most time with, is the descending circle of fifth sequence, which was the Glory Gaynor example, I Will Survive, we talked about today. And then um, there's all, the book also mentions an ascending circle of fifths, which is all of the chords in the opposite order of the descending circle of fifths. And that's less common, but it does appear sometimes. And then <clears throat> the descending thirds, which is our Pachelbel Canon example, that's very common as well. And then there are a couple of uh, stepwise ones that are mentioned, the parallel 6-3 chords, which is the Beethoven Sonata excerpt. And then we have uh, some techniques that involve using uh, uh, non-harmonic, non-chord tones. So. so we're gonna focus on the three I pointed, I gave you today. So the descending circle of fifths, the descending third sequence, and then being able to recognize parallel first inversion triads in music. The rest of them I'm going to ignore, and I'll do that in the video as well as on any of our um, assessments. So the <clears throat> information on descending circle of fifths begins on page 380. So as we went over today, the chord progression is just going descending by fifth by Roman numerals. So we go one, four, seven, three, six, two, five, one, which sounds like this in C major. And you can see there that I've also included the example in minor, which is what we went over today. <clears throat> So notice that the bass alternates to descending fifth and ascending fourth, which is what I played. Fourth. And then notice that this is a diatonic circle of fifths as opposed to the one we used to do our key signatures with the when you're used to writing out. That is a chromatic circle of fifths. So, <clears throat> so note it, and so that alternating of fifth and fourth gives us two chord and two baseline note segments to repeat as a pattern. That's very important that we're going to use two chord segments. And also notice that this pattern of harmonic sequence overrules some of the rules we've already learned for certain chords. Like for example, we'll see root position, diminished triads, doubled leading tones in that seventh chord, and uh, the chord, chord, normal chord function is sometimes in the wrong. It is something in the, something we normally wouldn't see, like seven going to three. <clears throat> so uh, another term that the book starts using on the bottom of page three eighty one is linear intervallic pattern. The basic idea is that to keep track of what we, which version of certain sequences we're using, we're gonna 
<clears throat> keep track of the intervals between the soprano and the bass in the chords. So, <clears throat> so that, that's what the pattern is. And if you look on page 382, example 16.5, you'll see that there's 10 and 8 is written under each of the chords. And that is measuring the distance between the soprano and the bass. So if I play the outside voices, we got a tenth going to an octave, going to a tenth, um, I'm sorry, going to an octave, going to a tenth, going to an octave, going to a tenth, going to an octave. <clears throat> so that's one example, and the rest of them are all different numbers, but the same sequence with the voices in different places. So those are linear intervallic patterns. So, we've got lots of choices for our descending circle of fifths. We can do all, all of the chords in root position, like the examples in 16.5, but we can also do ones with inversions, which are on the bottom of the page in 16.6, alternating root position and first inversion. And then we can do versions with seventh chords, like the Mozart example we did in class from the F major sonata, Kirkle 332. <clears throat> and what I pointed out, and I, I sort of mentioned, was that the in that example and in root position seventh chords for circle of fifths is that it's going to alternate complete seventh chords with incomplete just like we did with uh, two seven going to five seven in the previous chapter on other seventh chords omitting the fifth and doubling the root but we can also do versions where we alternate root position triads with first and first seventh chords and on the bottom of page 383 we have another example where <clears throat> we can alternate two different kinds of seventh of the seventh chords, that is, uh, inversions, that'll give us common tones and descending steps, making it very, very smooth. Nobody's leaping around at all, not even the bass. So the other sequence we talked about, which was the Pachelbel canon in D, you know, uh, idea. <clears throat> that was our descending third sequence. So notice that we're measuring the thirds with every other chord. So we're getting one, five, six, three, four, one. <clears throat> and I'm only going to ask you to be able to write these things from the one chord to the second one chord that I have written here. I'm not going to ask you to keep going around. So it's also important to notice that on page 387 we have options where we can have the intervening chord, the added chord, uh, be in first inversion. So we can have 1, 5, 6, 6, 3, 6, 4, 1, 6, which gives us a descending stepwise bass. You want to be able to write both of these options, as we'll uh, do one of them later. So parallel 6-3 chords, which we saw in the Beethoven example from the last movement of the Opus 2, number 3 sonata. And it's just a bunch of first inversion triads in a row, and sounds really cool. And it's just prolonging the tonic, basically. So, and they happen a lot in classical period music. So you just want to note that them when they're there and not get confused when you're just seeing a bunch of first inversion drives in a row. It's basically that. So now you're ready to go into the second video where we'll part write some of them. <laughs>